Hi, welcome to the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. Today we are um, going to celebrate our carnivores, carnivore craze today. So uh, we have a couple of different species around the zoo that we're gonna kind of highlight. Carnivores kind of come in a variety of different types. You know, there are the classic meat eaters and then there's the fish eaters and then, um, so they can come in all different sizes and types. So be looking for the different kinds that we highlight today and we're excited to have you here at the Chaffee Zoo. Hi, and welcome to our African lion exhibit. We have three African lions here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo, part of our carnivores again, uh, very large carnivores. So we have right behind me is Chewy, our Chisolo. Um, he's our male, and we have two females, mom and daughter, uh, Kiki and Zamaya. Um, so lions are really unique in the cat family in that as a carnivore, they actually kind of hunt as a group or a pride. Um, most cats in general don't like to kind of hang out together or work together, but lions really use that to their benefit in order to take down large prey items out in the wild. So usually males are there to help protect the pride and, and fend off for other males that might come into the pride or other dangerous things that happen for a pride. And usually the female does all the hunting. Males will join in the hunt, but usually it's just the females. And then the way that feeding goes is male gets to eat first because he's doing all the work to protect his pride. And then females and then cubs after that if there's enough food. And there usually is because they're taking down large prey items. So, so that's kind of how their social structure is, kind of works with their feeding structure as well. So lions are very unique carnivores in that manner. Hi everybody, my name is Charlie. I'm one of the primary reptile keepers here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. And today I'm gonna to be telling you a little bit about our big guy, Peewee. Peewee is our American alligator. He is one of the many carnivores that you'll find here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. And he's pretty cool because during the summer he actually moves quite a bit more than you see him in the winter. A lot of guests will stop us and say, hey, you know, is that actually a real alligator? And we're like, yeah, he definitely is. American alligators are really cool because they are ambush predators. That means they're a predator that likes to lay and wait for their prey to come by. So they're not gonna be running after anything or swimming after anything. They're just gonna kind of wait for that delicious meal to swim on by. American alligators are really cool because they have this really interesting metabolism. Like most reptiles, their metabolism slows down during the cold months. So in reality, Peewee only gets fed about six months out of the year. We do try to feed him when it starts getting a little bit cooler, but he will actually let us know in the way of not eating that he's not interested in food anymore. So from about October, to April, he won't eat anything. And that's not a bad thing. If he were to eat stuff while it was cold, that could actually make him sick because his metabolism is so much slower during the winter that food would just sit in his gut and make him sick. So whenever he eats, it's going to be during the warmer months when he has that higher metabolism and he can actually process that food. We're here with our Andean condors, who are also carnivores, and they are a very specialized type of carnivore called a scavenger. So condors will primarily eat things that they find that are already dead. And they serve a really important role in our ecosystem by recycling those dead things and eating them. They're able to process things that have died from anthrax, Ebola, bubonic plague, completely remove those diseases from the environment, and create a much healthier environment. So that's part of the uh, ecological importance of condors and also all kinds of vultures. Now today is one of our condors fast days, so they are not getting a much diet today. Instead what they're getting is a cow femur head. So they will spend a lot of time ripping that um, tendons and the remaining flesh off of those bones. That'll give them a chance to participate in those natural ripping, tearing, and pulling behaviors, but will also limit the amount of calories that they take in today, because we want to make sure that we keep them at a nice, healthy weight, not too heavy and not too light. Hi, my name is Megan, and I'm a zookeeper here at Fresno Chaffee Zoo, and we are at Sea Lion Cove. Our seals and sea lions at Sea Lion Cove are a part of a group called pinnipeds. They are carnivores of the sea. 
They have cone-shaped teeth, which are great for catching slippery fish. Here at Sea Lion Cove, we feed them three types. <laughs> they eat herring, capelin, and squid. Squid is probably the most important now that it's summertime because living in a saltwater environment, one of the biggest ways they get fresh water is from the food they eat. And so since squid has a high water content, it is crucial that they get lots of squid to make sure that they are hydrated in our hot Fresno summers. Seals and sea lions have torpedo shaped bodies and you may even notice that the sea lions have nice long necks. This means that they're excellent fishermen. They are able to make quick movements with those long necks to catch the food that they like. Today we've thrown in two types of enrichment. We've thrown in ice treats, which are frozen blocks of ice with fish frozen inside, as well as some toys that have fish tossed inside. These two types of enrichment stimulate the natural foraging instincts of our seals and sea lions. The really cool part about this enrichment is that some of these toys were actually donated generously by our public. Our sea lion, Sir, enjoys these immensely and she loves to toss them around and flip them upside down and do anything she can to get the fish out. So these types of enrichment really help us stimulate those natural foraging instincts that they have that they would be using out in the wild. So we're here at the Fennec Fox exhibit, which is really exciting. These are one of our smaller carnivores. Uh, they are really unique animals in that they have very large ears. They use those to dissipate the heat uh, when they're out in the desert, um, out in the wild, and then also here, because Fresno gets really hot. Uh, so they dissipate heat, but they are also really good at hearing. They can hear bugs that kind of crawl across the surface while they're in their dens, you know, at quite a distance. So, so they use those ears to really radiate, to dissipate heat and to hear things really well but also what really helps them kind of camouflage whenever they kind of get close to their prey atoms because they pounce on their prey atoms so they like to get as close as possible being a fox and do that final pounce they have fur on the bottom of their paw pads that they can use to quiet their footsteps so that way they can really make that final pounce and be really you know secretive on their prey items so that's really unique about these guys uh, they are a family unit usually out in the wild so usually you see a mom and dad and some kids and mom and dad stays together for most of their life so they're very unique carnivores hi my name is maya and i'm a zookeeper at the fresno Chappie zoo we're hanging out in kangaroo walkabout at our, at our kookaburra exhibit Kookaburras are carnivores. They are a species of bird that are not raptors, but do specialize in hunting prey. So kookaburras actually have um, some unique behavioral adaptations that help them to hunt that prey. One of the things that they'll do is when they find something they want to eat, whether it's a rodent, a lizard, or even another small bird, is they will take that um, food item and they will hit it hard against a rock or a branch and that will help to break down the bones of that prey animal that they're eating. Kookaburras don't have very sharp beaks. They're not able to tear into their food. They're not able to chew because they don't have teeth. So instead they have to use that whacking motion in order to break down those bones and make that prey item something that they are able to swallow. Now kookaburras do live in family units and we do have a male and a female here and they are a breeding pair. And one other fun thing that kookaburras will do is they will actually feed each other as a part of their uh, courtship process. So they'll take their prey item, they will whack it to break down those bones, and then they'll go ahead and feed it to their partner in order to solidify that relationship. Hi, my name is Dallas and I'm one of the keepers that helps take care of our wolves here at the Fresno Chaffee Zoo. Red wolves are actually one of three species of wolves in the whole world, uh, two of which are found here in North America. Uh, unlike the wolves that we're more used to seeing, the gray wolves, these guys are quite a bit smaller and uh, very sleek and reddish in color. Historically, red wolves were found all along the eastern seaboard and throughout the southeast, uh, but due to hunting and eradication, uh, they were actually pronounced uh, extinct in the wild um, in 1980. Uh, now, prior to that extinction, uh, zoos came together to uh, bring wolves into captivity to try to breed them and save them. And it was a very successful program that our zoo has been a part of. Uh, over the last 30 years or so, um, we've been able to breed uh, nationwide uh, hundreds of red wolves and even return some of them back to the wild. 
Now, our wolf pack that we have here at Fresno Shafi Zoo right now is a older male and his two sons. Uh, we have been uh, breeding wolves here at uh, Fresno for many years, um, but at the moment we are just holding on to these boys until they get their orders to go to different zoos or maybe some new wolves come to us. Uh, we don't really know when that's going to be, but in the meantime, we will provide them with um, really great care, uh, lots of fun enrichment and tasty food to eat. Now these guys are carnivores, uh, so they eat a lot of meat. Uh, we feed them a raw meat diet of um, either kind of chunk steak meat, uh, a ground meat that is fortified for zoo canids, um, and sometimes just big bones that they can chew on. And since these guys are not um, obligate carnivores, meaning they will eat some vegetation and stuff, we'll provide them some other treats sometimes too, like some fruits or vegetables.